Hi everyone and welcome to the Zoyam Academy. Uh, this is part four of a series of videos on model reference adaptive control for a first order system. Um, this is the last part of the uh, video series. And today we will be going over the algorithm for the uh, example. Um, and basically it's gonna be a quick video. Uh, and I'm hoping to upload it to the website that way you guys can have access to it. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so I'm going to try and go over different parts um, of the of the uh, of the derivation inside. This is a MATLAB portion. Uh, essentially, let me start by putting out the, the the adaptation game, and the adaptation game comes from the. Uh, I kind of try to put it side sideways so we guys can see it. The adaptation game is gamma, right? And like I mentioned in one of the videos, the gamma is very important. Um, the value that you set for gamma determines how good the plant model actually tracks the reference model. And we'll kind of do a few examples of different gammas so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, the other one is the adapt is B. That's that's the plan parameter B, which is again, it's right here. We are just putting it as a variable. Uh, so right now we're setting it as three. And now the initial conditions, again, one important thing you will notice is that the this control parameter C and D. Um, I set it initially to zero, but if you know like the ideal parameters, it's gonna require less control input to adapt the system to that, to adapt the system, right? And you will, again, you will see the example when I kind of uh, mess around with this. And now we're going down to the simulation parameters. Again, this is kind of uh, obvious. You have the time step between different uh, simulation and you have the total time, you kind of like, we kind of coming up with time vector. And this is just kind of getting the total number of, um, the num L basically gives, gives you the total number of time vectors, uh, which we're going to be iterating over. And then we are just initializing a bunch of like the the, the output data, the input data, the control, uh, the control parameters C and D, and then the state vector at every time step. Uh, we're doing this because I'm planning to like um, plot it afterwards. So that's why I had to initialize it with zeros. Now we're going down to the simulation loop. Now we're going to do two examples. One example is with a reference input, which is 10 sine 3t. And another input, another example is going to just have the uh, constant control uh, reference input. Again, we define the error just like we defined in here. Um, let me see right here. You have the actual output of the system or actual state output of the system and you have the reference uh, state. Now you have the adaptation law, which again, it's given by this equation right here on the right side, uh, minus sine of P times gamma times E times R. Again, same thing with D dot, just, difference you have y instead all right so we have gone over the adaptation okay now let's go over the control update parameters now recall that we initially analyzed we in initially initialized the control parameters c and d so what we want to do is every time step we have to update it right because recall that the adaptation law is what actually updates the uh, controller parameters right and so we have to every time step we have to um, update it so initially we're using c and d as zero as we set as we set it over here over here and then you know that's initially now it does the first initial step then at the next time step it basically um, updates with this formula because remember this is c dot right so if you multiply it times time you get kr so that's basically what it's saying and so we define also the control, the control law, which we defined earlier. And again, this is the uh, estimated controller, right? This one, not the ideal one. Because again, the equation basically takes into account the ideal control law. 
Okay, so, and then we define the plant model, which was at the beginning, right here, our equation one. Um, and then we define x m dot, actually equation one, I'm not using minus one on this case. So you can kind of see it right here. I have it as plus y or plus one times y, which, which is y. And then you have x m dot, which gives you that. Um, and then move, moving down again, just like we updated the control parameters, remember we have to update the state uh, at every time step, the output and the state at every time step. And lastly, we have to store those, um, the data, right? We have to store the output, we have to store the input vector, we have to store the parameters at each time step because the idea is that we want to plot it and see how, it, how it's performing. Um, and basically this plotting, this plotting section basically goes over plotting the different data. This plots the output versus the time. This plots the state versus time. Again, this is a sub, this is a, a subplot. So it basically plots uh, this part, this two together, and then this one on the bottom one. And we just, this is just the input. So it's gonna show us how the control signal is varying for every time signal, for every time step. And then we have this figure two, which is gonna again going to show like this um, C parameter with the D parameter. Okay, so I think we have gone over the whole code. This is a very simple code, uh, very easy to follow. If you have the equations, you will kind of understand what's going on. Uh, but again, don't hesitate, and don't hesitate to ask questions um, in the comment section. If you were just kind of wondering if you still have some doubts on how it works, uh, but it should be straightforward. Let's go ahead and, and uh, run it and see what it gives us. Okay, so waiting for the results. Again, we're running this, uh, this is a reference. Uh, let me just put this, look at, just kind of look at this block diagram. This is the reference right here that we're putting into the system. Okay, so we get the output. Let's see what it, let's understand, analyze what it's telling us. All right, so let's go with figure one. So figure one, uh, what we were trying to do was to plot the output data, which is the first plot, with the uh, input, uh, state input, which is uh, actually, I said output for the reference, uh, output for the reference is XM. And then you have the planned output, which is blue. All right, so you can kind of see that it has, initially it starts like kind of like it's, it has some errors in the system. You can see they, they are not both like aligned to each other. Uh, it takes a while before you can kind of see it starts getting better around one point, probably 1 1.8 seconds. Uh, it starts doing a better job at tracking the reference it's tracking the reference model again. You know, this is the reference model. Uh, I'm pointing on the right side. I'm hoping you can see my cursor. Um, it's uh, basically the plant is trying to track the reference. That's basically the idea behind this MRAC. Um, and we can kind of see this a little bit of error initially, but again, after we have around 1.8 seconds around this area, it kind of does a better job at following the uh, reference model. And now the bottom plot, remember we we're plotting the control input, right? And so initially you can kind of see this, 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 this is kind of high frequency, right? Uh, initially. And the reason behind this is because the parameters are still trying to adjust to the ideal parameters, right? We don't know what the ideal parameters are yet, right? Yet. But the system because of the because of our uh, because of our formula on how to adapt the parameters and we have the, this is the control law that we picked right and then this is the adaptation law it's do, it's doing a better job right and this is consistent with the output because you can kind of see how at 1.7 the it's getting a better tracking now which is the same 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 scenario right as around this area you see the input is starting to it's starting to be like more smooth, right? It's starting to be more smooth. 
Um, so essentially, the error is decreasing as time goes on, and you know the input is getting better, and same thing as the output getting better. So yeah, so that is it with this one. So yeah, so we can see initially it's kind of like uh, it's a little bit more errors than as time is going on. All right, let's look at figure two, which is going over the different parameters. Again, consistent with what we saw earlier. Um, the control input is trying to find the right balance, right? And the reason it's doing that is because kx and kr are, are, are changing. And kx and kr, kx is c in this case, and kr is d. And you can see how it's basically trying to adapt to the right parameter. So if initially we start with uh, roughly 1.3 and roughly negative 1.66, then you will see that the input is going to be a little bit more smooth. And the reason being, we have the, we, we kind of close to the ideal parameters. Initially we picked, remember we picked zero, zero. So that's why it starts at zero right here. But if we start at around these different values, you will see that there won't be so much chattering in the system. Right, so because the parameters are really close and that comes back to my point of, you know, what I mentioned earlier, we're gonna change this. Let's change this, let's change C to, let's do 1.33 and then let's do D negative 1.67. So let's say 1.34 actually. One point, let's do this guy 1.34. And then initially let's set this to negative 1.67. All right, let's save that, let's run it again. And you will see how it's going to be a lot better. Aha, here you go, here you go. Now you can see the input is very smooth, right? It's a lot smoother than earlier because again, we are close to the ideal parameters. And that's kind of what we're mentioning when we're, when we're deriving this, we had the estimated control parameters and we had the ideal control, um, the ideal control parameters and the estimated control parameters. And you can kind of see how when we started around this area, around this point, it's pretty smooth, right? You can, I mean, if you zoom in, you can kind of still see a little bit of a, uh, sinusoidal kind of wave going on in there. But again, very smooth compared to the previous one. And you can kind of tell that the output is also very tracking, the plant output is tracking the reference model very, very well. Uh, I mean, obviously if you kind of zoom in a little bit, you might see some slight errors, but again, it's hard to tell, right? Which means that the, the control, which means that our derived equations for the control law, uh, actually, I think it's 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 good. May it might not be perfect, but it's good, right? It's it's doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. Okay, now next thing that I wanted to show was how to if how the uh, adaptation gain kind of plays into this too. So let's say let's put the adaptation gain very high, right? It's still positive. But let's put it very high. Let's see what it gives us. Just you can see. Okay, so again, you can see how we have some instability in the system, right? Um, now the system is kind of going unstable, right? You can kind you can kind of tell it from the output of the plant model. The reference model is still like where it needs to be, or some sort, but the the Plant output is going very unstable, right? Really unstable, and it's not finishing the during the whole time, um, time vector. So you can kind of see. So yeah, gamma. That's to tell you that gamma plays a very big role. Um, let's put ten in this case. Let's put ten now, and see. But gamma plays a very big role into how the system performs, right? You don't want to set gamma so high then you have some issues and you don't want to set it negative things either. Then it's going to be some issues because gamma is positive. Okay, so um, I think this is pretty uh, self-explanatory, like how this thing works. So you can kind of see that the 
the controller, the this controller that we derived for the for, for this for the first order system of this form. Again, there are different forms, right? Right. You want to make sure that you derive them for the right form. And <laughs> sorry. And so it tells us that the controller works perfect for this example, for this type of problem. And this adaptation loss is also good. All right. So <laughs> sorry. I hope you um through all this video series, you now have a better understanding and you can actually apply it in your own problems how to use the model reference adaptive control, right? And I would recommend, you know, if you're still having issues, just try and go over the videos again and try to solve it by, your, by yourself. Uh, try and solve it by yourself. It's going to help you, like, actually learn how to do it and how to implement it in real world examples, right? Because this can be a real world example. Actually, before we get done, let's do this other example. I almost forgot. Let's do it with the constant input. It's pretty much going to be similar to what we got earlier, right? So, okay. So again, we have, this is it right here. Doing a good job tracking. Uh, control input is pretty smooth. And then the control parameters are basically almost smooth. Even you have some minor signs so go here, but it's average around the initial input that we had that we in that we use. Right. Because if you set it to zero, you will see how it's going to change again. Um the adaptation is not bad, it's 10, so let's keep it that way, even though it's a little bit very you have a very high frequency initially so if you have this if this is your actuator think of it as your actuator really like doing some crazy movements initially uh, trying to like uh, adapt the system and to changing parameters okay so let's put this guy to two let's see what he gives us um so yeah it's, it's a lot better now because we reduce gamma uh, you can kind of see how you, you can actually see the error, right? And again, because we the parameter is zero, right? If we say parameters to what they were before, uh, you will see that it does a little bit better. But again, this was just to give you a, an idea on how to program this in MATLAB very easy. Obviously, if you have like a more difficult problem, it's probably going to be a lot difficult, but um, this should this should work. This should give you an idea on how to do it. All right. Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, all the uh, four videos. Um, again, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section. But uh, we really appreciate if you can subscribe to our channel. That way, we can get more of this uh, content uh, on the on a frequent basis. All right. Thank you and have a good one. Bye.